This video explains how to capture a screenshot of a page whether partially or fully. Let's start, but make sure to hit the like button in case you enjoyed, and subscribe to not miss new content. As part of the page API, Puppeteer exposes a method called screenshot, which allows us literally to capture the screenshot of the page. This is mainly useful when we want to keep the state of the page as an image for our records, analyzing it or for visual testing purposes. Although we said the screenshot method is part of the page API, we should be more precise and understand that it belongs to the element handle class. In short, this class represents an in-page DOM element, so this means we theoretically can invoke the method on a result of the dollar selector, in order to specifically capture it. Anyway, let's see how to practically use the screenshot method. Well, it turns out that capturing screenshots using Puppeteer is a pretty easy action. All we need to do, is invoking the screenshot method of the page instance, and insert a path for the output image file, using the path option. It's important to make sure we do pass a path, because otherwise the image won't be generated. Besides, we can configure the type of the screenshot file, when the default is PNG. Great! Before we're taking the screenshot, we need to understand two things. Firstly, the screenshot would be captured according to the default viewport, so we might want to adjust it properly. Secondly, the screenshot would be captured instantly, so it's probable we need to wait for something, such as an element to be rendered or when the network is idle. Okay, so now we're ready to run the script and take the screenshot, here it comes. Indeed, the file was created with the correct name, and the image itself is consistent with the website. Let's say now that we want to capture a partial screenshot of a specific area inside the website, regardless of the viewport size. Meaning, we don't want to restrict the viewport measurements in order to take a partial area of the website. Well, the screenshot method accepts an option called clip, exactly for this purpose. Using clip we can control the coordinates of the area to be taken, and also set the measurements of it. Let's run the script once again. And we'll notice the image this time is clipped and reflects a very specific area. Another capability of the screenshot method is capturing a screenshot of the full page. Basically, the way to do that is merely setting the full page option to true. This time, we're going to capture a screenshot of the entire project page on GitHub. So let's run the script and check out the new output file. And if we scroll down far enough, we can notice that the image is repetitive and not completely the full page. After seeing that, we should understand that the output correctness is not guaranteed and actually dependent on different variables. Practically, the output can be incorrect because of the way the website grows vertically. For example, when overflow Y is hidden. Other causes could be the browser itself, such as different user agent between headful and headless modes, or even overflowing the maximum texture size of Chromium. The point is, without going into details, there are various causes that might mess our full page output, and each solution should fit the use case. Anyway, in our case, we're going to take the screenshot on headful mode, and after running the script for the final time, we can notice that now the screenshot of the actual full page is captured. Don't forget to hit the like button in case you enjoy, and to subscribe to my channel.